Number 51. Carborundum is silicon carbide, which is SIC, a very hard metal used as an abrasive on sandpaper and in other applications. It is prepared by the reaction of pure sand, which is SiO2, with carbon at high temperature. Carbon monoxide, CO, is the other product of this reaction. Write the balanced equation for the reaction and calculate how much SiO2 is required to produce 3 kilograms of SiC. Okay, we got a word problem here. We got this. So the first thing they say is that we have to write a balanced equation. Now we've done tons of work uh, figuring out how to write balanced equations, how to actually balance the equation. So I'm going to kind of brush through this. If you guys are on the playlist, with that, which I highly recommend, you guys are, you could go back in the playlist. You'll see that there's like, you know, 80 problems collectively, you know, somewhere around there of <laughs> just balancing. <laughs> Cause I love you guys and I want you guys to do awesome. All right. But let's, let's pick it up. Right. So they're saying that this compound, basically this carbor, uh, the carborundum, right. <laughs> is just silicon carbide. So I will be calling this silicon carbide and it is prepared. Prepared is another word for made by a reaction. So here's the starting materials. I have to react pure sand with carbon. So I'm reacting pure sand, which is S I O two with carbon. So with, we have to add the sand and the carbon together. So literally plus the carbon and that's the reaction. And what do I get out of it? Right? What's the yield? Well, it is prepared, it is made, and the it that they're talking about is the actual silicon carbide. So that's the one product. And then they said carbon monoxide, CO, is the other product. So I have two reactants and I also have two products. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to center this. Ooh, what happened to the, what happened to that little, there we go, okay. Now, just making a equation is not complete. We always just have to make sure that we balanced it. So I'm just going to quickly look this over and just see if I, you know, have balanced it. But I have it, right? I have two oxygens on my left side and I only have one oxygen on my product side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to balance the oxygens. I'm going to put a two in front of here. That will give me two oxygens and I have two oxygens. But now it looks like the carbons are not balanced, right? I have one carbon on my reactant side on the left side, and I have two carbons plus another one. So that's a total of three carbons. So thankfully I just have all my carbons over here. So I'm just going to put a three here and now it's balanced. I have one silicon and one silicon. So that's balanced. I got the two oxygens and now I have the three uh, total carbons. So we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. So let's see. Perfect. Balanced equation done. Now let's do some stoichiometry. Let's write underneath what they gave us and what we're trying to solve. We want to produce three kilograms of SIC. So wherever the SIC is, I'm going to say, okay, I, I, I want to produce that. Okay. And now it says how much silicon, uh, oxide, right? The pure sand, right? Cause that's what this is. How much SiO2 is required? So this is the question. This is where it is in my balanced equation. So I'm just going to put a question mark here. Now they didn't say specifically what unit they wanted this in, but I'm, I'm going to assume that, you know, they want the mass of it and a mass is always in grams. So let's see how big or how small the gram value is. And maybe we can tweak it to put it into a different unit. Chances are, I mean, they gave you three kilograms here. We probably are going to have to convert to kilograms, but we, we will see as we go. Now, this is a great setup guys. If you see that they gave you information for one compound, and they're asking you for information of another compound. And the only thing that those two compounds have in carb carbon is they're in a balanced equation. 
we're doing stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is just a fancy way for saying going from one compound to another using ratios and a balanced equation. Now the, the setup for stoichiometry is this flow diagram right here. So I highly recommend you guys remembering it. It's just four different things. You're basically going from one compound, in this case I labeled it A, to another compound, which I labeled as B, as the generalities, and you're going from grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams to moles to moles to grams. Now, we just gotta tweak this to the specifics of what we have here. So, we started off with silicon carbide, right? The SIC, so that's going to be the red and it was no coincidence that I wrote this in red, right? I tried to remember what my, my flow diagram was, but maybe I will get rid of this gram. And since this is what we're ending with, I'm going to put this in blue. Now, it's not really A anymore. It's SIC. So I can go from grams of SIC to moles of SIC. And then from there, I'm going to, you know, transfer it over to the moles of the compound that I want. In this case, it's the SiO2. And then I can get my grams of SiO2. But now the question is, right, what's my starting material, right? Here, it's in grams. But what did they give me? Oh, they gave me three kilograms. So how do I go from kilograms to grams? We should know that conversion, right? All we have to do is just multiply by 1,000. So in this case, 3 kilograms is the same thing as 3,000 grams, right? I could just take my decimal and move it to the right three times, and that's 3,000. I'm just going to put this in scientific notation just for sig fig purposes. Um, actually, it doesn't really matter. Let's just do 3,000. We'll get the same answer at the end. Just trying to make it as simple and easy for you guys. So now I'm going to take this number and say I have 3,000 grams. And now we're ready to do our conversion. So stoichiometry is just using those ratios, using the dimensional analysis. So start with what you're given. I have 3,000. And now I'm going to put this in red just to kind of color code. So I have 3,000 grams of SIC. I don't want this unit. I have to work my way to get to the end result. But the first thing is, you got to just work in steps. I want to go to moles of SIC. So I multiply and I put a ratio. The unit that I don't want goes on the opposite side. Remember, there's, you know, over one. So this would be grams of SIC. And the unit that I want goes on the top, moles of SIC. Now, I always like to put my units first, and then I come back and I say, what are the numbers that go here? Well, it's a gram to mole or mole to gram conversion of the same compound. We've done this so many times, right? Anytime you're going from grams to moles of the same compound, you're always just using the periodic table. And remember, if you're using the periodic table, aka PT, you always have one mole of the substance. So wherever the word mole is, you just put a one there. Now I'm going to go on the periodic table and just figure out what the mass is. The mass number always goes with the gram. So I have one silicon and I have one carbon in SIC. So I'm just going to add them together. So the 12.01 for the carbon and then the silicon is the 28.09 on my periodic table. We should get roughly the same answer. So I get 40.1. Now everything is accounted for here, so I can cancel out the unit that I don't want. Now, I move forward. I wouldn't necessarily get the answer yet, guys, because on tests and quizzes, you know, time is of the essence. So it's just easier and quicker to just keep, you know, strolling along with your conversion until you finally get the end result. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm over here now, but I want to be to grams of the silicon oxide. So I just do the same thing. I multiply by a ratio, work with the units first, and then double back to put the numbers. I don't want moles of SIC anymore. That goes on the bottom. I look ahead, right? And now I'm at moles of SiO2. 
Now, this is different. Do you see how I'm crossing over and I'm going from one compound to another? This conversion is the only new thing that we've learned, right, in stoichiometry. We're now just using the balanced equation, the BE. In this case, these numbers are the coefficients of the balance equation. It's just the big numbers in the front. So find where SiO2 is, find where SiC is, and just put the big numbers that they are in the front. So for example, here's SiO2. However, there's no number in the front here. Ah, this means that I really have one SiO2. So that number goes right here in the numerator, where the SiO2 is. Do the same thing for the SiC. Oh, well, there's no number here. So there's a secret one, and that's the number that goes on the bottom. Now everything is accounted for here, so cancel out and keep going. Now you're finally here. We have one more step. We want to find the grams, so multiply by a ratio, throw this unit on the opposite side, because I don't want that. And now put the grams of the SiO2 on the top. Units are here, but what are the numbers? Well, it's the same type of idea. I'm going from a gram to mole of the same compound. That was this formula, or this, you know, uh, ratio. Right, it was a mole to gram of the same compound. We use the periodic table, so we're going to use the same thing, the periodic table. And remember, when you use the periodic table, you always have one mole. So in this case, the one goes on the bottom. The one went on the top because the mole was on the top. In this case, it's on the bottom. The mass goes with the gram unit on the periodic table. So we have one silicon and two oxygens. So 2 times 16, which is 32, and then one silicon, which is 28.09. So I get roughly 60.09. Okay, and maybe, maybe I should just move this a little bit. 60.09. And the units that are on the opposite sides cancel. And I'm left now with the unit that I want. In this case, it's grams of the silicon oxide, right? The SiO2. Okay. Now I can solve. Now, you can multiply all the numerators, multiply all the denominators, and then do the division. I'm just going to do it all in one shot. I start with the 3,000. The 40.1 is in the denominator. So DD, denominator, divide. So divide by 40.1 and then times by 60.09, and I get, yeah, okay, I get a big number for my grams. So four, so 4495.5, four, right? And that's grams of SiO2. Let's convert this into kilograms. So if we went to grams, it was multiplying by 1,000. I'm just going to take this number and divided by 1,000 to get kilograms. So what do I get? D okay, now this makes more sense. So with rounding and with sig figs, the number that you started with in the problem, which was technically the 3.00, had three sig figs. So we just have to make sure that we have three sig figs at the end. So it would be 4.495, but the 5 rounds the 9 up to a 10, and now you get 4.50 kilograms of the pure sand, the SiO2. And that's it. So basically what this means is that if you want to produce 3 kilograms of this silicon carbide, right, you need to have 4.5 kilograms of the SiO2. It's kind of like a recipe. That's all that these stoichiometry and the balance equations are. So if I wanted to make three cookies, right, or something, I needed to have 4.5, I don't know, cups of flour, but just something, you know, that you produced and what you reacted it with. But that's all that it is, guys. All right? So hopefully this helped.
let me know in the comments. I love talking to you guys. Thank you so much for viewing this video, and I really hope that I'm giving you quality help in your chem class. If you are in math or in physics, or if you have any friends or classmates that are in any three of these uh, subjects, let them know about us. We would love to help them out and help you out, obviously, as well. Go check out our main channel, uh, the main page on the channel. Uh, you, we have all of our playlists there for you guys to look through. All right? So I hope you guys are having a great day and keep studying hard, okay? I'll see you later. Bye-bye.